My research question is how has tourism changed the world? Uh, how does tourism impact on particular environments and on people and on places? And how does it do so beyond the conventional understanding and associations that we have towards tourism and which are linked to the famous five S of sea, sun, sand, sex and surgery? So then the challenge in such an attempt uh, to go beyond conventional understandings of tourism, also to go beyond the idea that the tourist is not supposed to leave anything except for footprints and not to take anything except for photographs. The challenge is to really identify all these dimensions involved in tourism, to um, try and see the world and the tourism industry as something that is not separate but actually to understand how tourism is not only a business, not only something that adds economic value, but actually something that has substantial and really sustaining, lasting impact on a place. And to look at the different areas like the political, the environmental, the cultural uh, sphere, Uh, and how tourism plays out in those, and how it actually brings those together as well. The approach I'm using is that of an anthropologist. So what I do is I do the anthropology of tourism, which means, first of all, as an anthropologist, you go somewhere for a considerable amount of time. You do field work, you do participant observation. So. I would arrive in, in my case, usually a tropical or subtropical place like Mauritius, Reunion Island where I've been, or, or Australia. And uh, I get out of the airport and the first thing, of course, I take in the place. I experience the heat, the different smell, the different environment that's there. And I'm tired, so I go to the hotel, I sleep and try to get some rest. Then I get the breakfast, maybe a tourist breakfast, maybe something with particular the tasty fruits that I only get in this particular place. And then I go to a meeting that I've organized from back in Germany before going to the place. And in that meeting I would meet a person that is somehow relevant for the tourism industry, that is somehow involved in the tourism industry. It could be a hotel manager, it could be a politician, it could also be a musician or another artist that earns a living from tourism. It could also be a meeting that is not organized. It could be a person that I meet in the hotel, that works at the hotel bar and that starts to tell me an interesting story, that, who starts to tell me about something that is really relevant and important for them at the moment, or a concern concern with a global economic downturn, a concern that not enough tourists arrive because of that. And um, from that person I'm directed to different topics and I'm directed to other people. So it's like a snowball that kind of grows a little bit bigger and bigger. And uh, that gives me uh, hints at what could be relevant, particularly relevant for this uh, period that I'm there in, the, in that area. And then I choose certain topics and try to reduce the snowball again, kind of make it more dense and come to this one particular issue or maybe two that will kind of lead and guide me through uh, the next month of field work in that area. My key finding is that tourism is not just a global industry. Tourism is a globe-making activity. It is actively changing the world on various levels. Let me give you three examples. One in regards to the environment, one in regards to people, and one in regards to heritage and tradition. In regards to the environment, there is a beautiful lagoon on an island called Rodrigue, where I did fieldwork. And this lagoon has recently been declared a marine protected area. Previously, this lagoon could be used by fishermen for their daily fishing activities. Now, as a marine protected area, this has been heavily restricted 
Instead, the lagoon is now a kite surfing resort. The new income for the local population, for hotels, for local businesses, for new bars and clubs that open up, is strongly motivated by this kite surfing resort tourism activity. So not only in that sense the environment is transformed from a fishing spot into a kite surfing resort, it also transforms the activities and livelihoods of the very people that live there. That brings me to my second example, how tourism can impact on the relationships between people. Of course, you can say that the tourist books the holiday somewhere, goes somewhere for a couple of weeks and then returns relaxed, but has not really engaged with other people. But that is rarely the case. Most of the time, there are forms of tourism that last for a much longer period and that have a much more lasting impact on the lives of people, on people that might meet their future uh, partners somewhere in a foreign place, on people that are not just going there for a couple of weeks, but that do something like work and travel and spend months in a different environment and have experiences that will completely transform their own lives that might be impacting on the way in which um, they will design their whole life course in the future, the job decisions they might make. The last example would be heritage. Um, think, for example, about a place that used to be an industrialized area and that now becomes a music festival space or a space for cultural events. Big uh, towns that used to be uh, uh, working towns like Liverpool, for example, that become all of a sudden cultural capitals, that become, uh, in that sense, attractive for tourists to visit for completely new reasons, and that again generate different livelihoods and transform the very ways in which we perceive these places. The relevance of my findings lies in the fact that they show that uh, you cannot consider tourism as something isolated from other things in the world. You cannot consider tourism only as an industry. You have to consider tourism as something that fundamentally impacts on the ways in which not only how we perceive the world, but actually on the ways in which the world is constructed around us, how it is shaped by us, how its heritage, its traditions, its landscapes, its um, infrastructures, its cities, its um, engagements also in the world of people and amongst each other, how tourism has a, a significant impact on all of this and how this in a way leads us to further towards understanding the globe in more nuanced and more complex ways than uh, we have done previously. The next step on this journey into anthropology of tourism would be, first of all, on a methodological level. I would try and look at the experience of the different places uh, that people visit from a more multi-sensory perspective. I would not only look at political issues or cultural issues, but also at the experience of tastes. For example, an anthropology of food would be relevant here. How do you transmit the exotic through the different tastes that you experience? Another question could be the impact that tourist movements from the global south have nowadays in the north. How do we deal with rising numbers of tourists from China, from India, from Russia? How do they shape our northern hemisphere? Or do we even want this? What do the people here, um, how do they perceive these new tourists arriving? And how do they engage with each other? Do they uh, also transform sustainably our environments? And then maybe as a third example, what I would look at 
would be the rising conflicts that we see in cities like Barcelona, in cities like Berlin, in a place like Venice, where there is a clear rejection against tourism development, where people are forming, building uh, um, groups and political agendas and uh, developing policies against tourism impact in a place where you would think that uh, um, it doesn't have much more uh, uh, economic possibilities than to uh, develop its tourism and rely on its tourism for the future. What kind of alternative futures are they imagining then after tourism?